What's up, guys? This is Coach Grant with First Down Training, and today we're going to be breaking down the average height and weight for Division I wide receivers. So I hope this video helps you guys out. hope it could teach you a few new things. But also, fellas, at the beginning of 2024, we are going to be traveling out to three more states across the U.S. for two-day-long QB and wide receiver camps. Next up, we're going to be coming out to San Francisco, California. Then we'll be heading out to Miami, Florida, and then we'll be coming out to Las Vegas, Nevada. So if you guys want some more information on how you could sign up for one of those three camps, check out that very first link in the description below. We'd love to see you out at one of our three off-season camps coming up. Again, very first link in that description below. Let's get started with this video. So how this video is going to go down, fellas, is I'm going to talk about the average height and weight for Division One wide receivers, and then I'm going to talk about some things that you guys can do to make up for maybe a lack of height, a lack of weight, a lack of speed. That will still make you stand out to college coaches. So this is a roster here from um, University of Georgia, and this is like kind of the bulk of their wide receiving core, right? So you look at these guys' heights, right? Six foot, six foot, six two, six one, all the way down the board. And their weight range is anywhere from what, 183 to like 200 pounds, right? So this is kind of the criteria, I guess you can say. I wouldn't pay too much attention to the weight. I would pay a little bit more attention to the height, right? Now listen, the wide receiver position, the nice part about it is that there are slots and there are outside wide receivers. So like, let's say you're a wide receiver in high school, right now and you're like an X or a Z wide receiver you're on the outside that's all you ever play and you're five foot ten because you're the biggest receiver on your team at the next level you're probably going to be a slot guy if you're six foot two and above you're or six foot one and above maybe I could say you're going to be probably an outside guy right it's just honestly it's just that's the nice part about receiver is that there are a lot of different spots for us I would say the average height is probably anywhere from five foot ten to six foot five plus, right? That's where you want to try to be. That's the range that you want to try to be. And obviously, you can't control your height, so it's kind of naive for us to say try to be because you can't control it. You're either going to be tall, or you're not going to be tall. But if you're not tall and you don't fit the mold, you don't pass the eye test, if you will. There are some things that you can do to stand out to a college coach, and that's what I want to discuss with these next few clips that we are going to show. Now, one other thing I want to add about the weight here, guys. When everybody knows this. When you get to college, they will put weight on you. 100% guarantee. If you don't weigh in a lot, they are going to make sure that you will weigh in a lot. So if you're like 175 pounds, don't be that guy that's like, oh no, I'm 175. Like, the, Guys, if you're the best receiver on the field, they don't care how much you weigh. Look at Travis Hunter. Look at Devontae Smith. Those are perfect examples of guys that had all the other attributes except maybe weight, except maybe size, and they still were able to make it work. So you need to focus. Obviously, you want to be as heavy as possible, but you don't want to be stressed out about it. You're trying to gain all this unhealthy weight that's going to slow you down, lower your body fat percentage. Because again, fellas, they honestly, like if they need to put weight on you, they will put weight on you. Anybody ask anybody that's ever played college football, they will tell you that exact same thing. So now what can you do to make up for a lack in size? So this is a wide receiver, um, plays at the university of Dartmouth, I believe. So now thing about this is that when you're on the smaller side of things, you need certain attributes of your game, certain skills that you have that are going to make you stand out from the rest. The, the six foot five guy, you need to do the things that he's not willing to do or maybe that he doesn't do with his game. And the first one I want to talk about is having a high football IQ. So this is a great example of a high football IQ release on a fade route. So let's talk about this, right? So we got this inside shade press coverage look. And a big part of being a shorter wide receiver, a smaller wide receiver is knowing how to run your routes because again you're not going to pass an eye test if you're short if you're five foot nine five foot eight like no college coach is going to look at you and say hey that's a college football player that's a d1 player they're going to look at you and say eh, he's a little small he's a little undersized how you're going to turn some heads at a camp on film is how you run routes and i think 50 percent of running routes is knowing how to run the route, knowing how to get separation, and then obviously the technique, the speed, all that stuff can tie in. So we have inside shade press coverage, and this wide receiver is going to be running a fade. So off the snap of the ball, this DB starts to inch back, keeping some cushion between the two of them, right? So a novice wide receiver, a novice route runner, what they would do is they would see that, they would just give maybe a quick jab off the ball and try to run around this DB. Guys, this DB is playing like this for a reason. He is keeping that space because he wants this wide receiver to try to pick a direction so he could get hands, squeeze him to the side, sideline and take him out of the play guys so what we have to do is when that dv starts to inch back and he starts to keep that cushion we got to take that cushion i got to lengthen the release i got to close the space and give him that move let's bring the line of scrimmage to him so when i burst up to this fade route i could get hip to hip with him and give the quarterback space to fade me 
open. That's the number one keyer when you're running a fade route, fellas. Like, if he's right up on the line of scrimmage, I want to give him a move. I want to attack him. I want to go hip to hip so I can try to stack him. So I give that quarterback room. Now, if he starts to inch back again, and let's say I make a move, and let's say I get him to jump, I still got to get to the outside. I still got to get to the fade route, and he can cut off that angle. So that's what I'm talking about with the high football IQ, fellas. You have to know how to run your routes. You have to know how to attack leverages, what to do off the ball, because that's the only way that we can get separation by being undersized. Yeah, your speed's important. Your athleticism's important, but you got to know how to use it. Now, second thing, if you're on the shorter side of things, you have to understand how to beat bigger, more physical DBs off the line. Because again, what are you probably going to get? Like, let's say you're five foot nine, want to play football in college. Guys, you're probably going to play out of the slot. Be real with you. Going to play out of the slot. You're not going to be playing on the outside with that type of height. Even if you played outside in high school. And let's say a coach is recruiting you. He's probably recruiting you to play slot. Because again, he college coach knows exactly where you're going to fit into his offense, to his system. So when you're out of the slot, what are you going up against a lot? Safeties, nickel linebacker, physical dudes who like to get hands. So you have to know how to beat these types of guys, right? So this is a great example of something I call a step back release. Now, a step back release is a heavily scrutinized release. I only like it if we do not waste time. So a step back release is pretty much exactly how it sounds. You're going to be in your stance. you got a DB who looks like he wants to be real physical off the ball. He's got like a slight forward lean with his pad level. He's going to try to get hands and jam. And the DB's goal with the jam is to disrupt timing with the quarterback. So as long as we don't let him get hands on me, I can still maintain my timing if I get up into the route fast. So you see how this wide receiver, this release is exactly how it sounds. You literally take your front foot and you step back. You create some space for yourself. This is no different than a split release in terms of the timing. This is no different than like a crossover release and how quick it has to be. It has to be quick. Your feet have to be violent and you got to create some space for yourself. Now, the mistake the receivers will make is they'll do this step back and then they do all this pointless dancing behind the line of scrimmage. They never attack forward. They never get up into the route. You have to get up into the route if you're going to do this step back. I promise you a coach will rip you. If you do this step back and you waste time, if you step back and go right now, he's not going to rip you he's, as long as you keep timing with the quarterback. And that's, again, that attention to detail that as a smaller guy you need. So to be able to take care of some of these bigger guys, fellas, doing that step back release, maybe doing a split release is a great way to create some space for yourself so you can stand out. Now, next thing I want to talk about in regards to sh slower wide receivers, may, well, not even so much slower, excuse me, shorter wide receivers, smaller wide receivers, what you can do to make up for maybe that lack of like height, lack of weight is running great routes. And by running great routes, I mean you need violent change of direction. So what do I mean by violent change of direction? So this is going to be a whip route here from Xavier Worthy out of the University of Texas. And this is a great example of the faster you get into a break, the faster you are going to get out of a break. So I'll tell you this, there's a classic interview with uh, Nick Saban. And he is, again, coach, the head coach of Alabama. They got some of the best wide receivers, best route runners that go through that school. Devontae Smith, Jerry Judy, just to name a few, Julio Jones, Amari Cooper, all those guys, great route runners, right? So he said, they asked him, what do you guys look for in wide receivers? And he said, what they're looking for is smoothness in and smoothness out of the break. How well do they get into their breaks and how well do they get out of their breaks, right? And that's it's funny because that's why some of the best route runners end up going there. And so for you to stand out to a coach of that caliber, you need that type of skill. You need that smoothness in and that smoothness out. So this is a great example of a whip route here. So anytime that you guys are running a double move, right, whether it's a whip whether or a single move, whether it's a comeback, you are always trying to sell something with your route. On a whip, you were trying to sell a slant. On a comeback, you were trying to sell a fade. We're trying to make the DB believe I'm doing something, then I do something opposite, right? That's the name of the game when it comes to running routes. So when you sell those routes, you have to do a couple things. You got to make sure that you run hard. Whether you're running a comeback or a whip, you got to run full speed. It's a controlled full speed. It's not like an out of control full speed, but it's pretty much for the most part full speed. You're going 100%, just being under control. Second thing, you want to make sure you maintain stride. You don't want to break to this whip and take all these choppy steps, giving away the break. And and you don't want to change your pad level or your body language. You break your body language stays the same and you trust your hip drop, aka the smoothness, quote unquote, into the break. That will help you get out of the break with some, quote unquote, smoothness. So when you go into this route, Guys, you have to change direction violently. What do I mean by violently? I mean that you were trying to bring your chest to your quads as fast as you can. A phrase that I used to say is you want to bring your chin to your knee. I felt like that chin to knee phrase caused a lot of wide receivers to lean too far forward. If you think chest to quad, 
that will sit your butt down. That will put you in explosive position. And the quicker you get into a break, aka the more violent you get into a break, the quicker you will get out of the break and be able to accelerate out. So you have to have that type of change of direction, fellas, if you want to stand out to a college coach when you're shorter, when you're not as big. Because again, that's what they're looking for. They're looking for the best receivers on the field. They're not looking for bodybuilders. They're not looking for basketball players. They want the best receivers on the field. So that's what you got to understand. You got to know how to beat press. You got to know how to be physical guys, but you also got to get in and out of your routes. Now, the next thing that I want to talk about for shorter wide receivers is creativity, right? So we don't necessarily have the luxury of the big six foot four, six foot five guy. Hey, I'm just going to run around you. Hey, I'm just going to run to the back of the end zone, throw a jump ball. I'm going to go get it. You got to get separation with your creativity, with how you run routes. And this is a perfect example of that. So this wide receiver is running a comeback route on the goal line. He peeks back to sell a goal line fade, drops this thing off, and wins on that comeback route. So let's talk about it, right? He takes this outside release. You're on the goal line. Remember what I said. You are always trying to sell something with your routes, right? So if you're running a comeback, you were trying to sell a fade. You were running a whip route. You were trying to sell a slant before you whip back out. Now, again, this is where the creativity element comes into play because you've got to have something extra to your game to stand out amongst the tall eye test guys. And by eye test guys, I mean six foot two and above at the receiver position who are fast, who weigh a lot. you got to have some things that stand out. So creativity is a great way to do that. So again, he's not going to get this DB to overcommit his hips and fully turn by just running hard, running in full stride and keeping good body language in the red zone. Because what's a DB not threatened by in the red zone? A deep fade. He's threatened by a goal line fade, but not a deep fade. So that's not going to do you any good, but this is where the creativity comes into play. Instead of selling the fade with his speed, he sells it with those eyes. He starts to look back for the ball, making this DB think that, oh, goal line fade, back pylon, then he drops this thing right off, and then he's able to get that separation. That Those are some of the things that you need to add to your game, fellas. If you feel that you're getting overlooked, if you feel your size is kind of holding you back a little bit, try to add some of this stuff to your routes. Create that separation. Be able to run good routes. Get in and out of your breaks fast. Be able to beat the physical press DBs. All the things that we have talked about will help you stand out not only to a college coach, but also your high school coach who's you, who you want to try to impress to be able to get on the field. Now, next thing that I think will impress, if you're a short guy, and again, you got to do all the little things right. And you got to do the things that the six foot four, six foot five, you know, four star, whatever athlete doesn't want to do. Blocking. Guys, if you can understand that blocking will keep you on the field and will turn a lot of heads and are opportunities to make highlights, you will look at the game differently. So let's look at this example here from Travis Hunter, right? He's not even involved with the play. It is a run play. He's one of those receivers that, again, doesn't have to play like this because he's one of the best in the country, but he does, right? He, gets, he, he has perfect blocking technique. He's low. He's going to keep his feet active. He's going to drive from his lower body. Like all of these things, you guys, all matter. So if you guys can show that you can block on tape, that that is super beneficial in a college coach's eyes because he knows that he's got a receiver. Okay, maybe he's not big enough, but he checks the boxes everywhere else. He's smoothing it out of the brakes. He's got great hands. He's got speed. He can block. He has a high football IQ. He knows how to run routes. All of those things, guys, is what will make you stand out to a coach if you lack that height and weight. And remember, there's a big, wide range of average height and weight for wide receivers. So if you can fall in that range and do all these things, you're shooing for somebody to at least take a chance on you. So this is a great example of blocking technique here from Travis Hunter. It's something all short guys should try to add to their skills. All right, fellas, really want to thank you for watching. I really appreciate it. If you have any questions at all, don't hesitate to leave those in the comment section below. Always appreciate the feedback. It's always great to hear from you guys. And again, fellas, if you would like to come out and train with us when we are in San Francisco, California, Miami, Florida, and Las Vegas, Nevada, check out that very first link in the description below. We'd love to see you out at one of our camps. I'll see you guys next time.